Pistols have been uh, all over the place throughout COD history. They were originally kind of not really good, aside from the Deagle, but over the last six games or so, we've gotten some insane levels of variety in the sidearms. Everyone has their favorite COD pistol, but everybody has their least favorite as well. Let me know what yours is in the comments today. Uh, those are the ones that are more fun to talk about. What's up, everybody? Chaos here. Today, we're going to be looking at my picks for the 10 worst pistols in COD history. You let me know which of these frustrated you the most. Drop a like and we start off with the USP-45 in Modern Warfare 2. A useless weapon. It's a dinky little handgun that Infinity Ward really thought people were going to use over secondaries like the Rafika or Model 1887. I mean, seriously, why was it even in the game? It was unlocked by default in the handgun category. It carried 12 rounds, killed in 3-4 to four shots. The range was okay. It was accurate. But, I mean, it comes down to competition. What reason did you have to run the USP-45 instead of the Rafika, the Deagle, the Spaz-12? I mean, I guess some people like it purely for the knifing, but the gun itself, it was pretty pointless. It's the right way to kick off this video. Before we move on, guys, help us get to 5,000 subscribers over on Chaos Comics. There is so much going on over there. It is a huge real-life venture of mine. We are going to be opening a massive Chaos Comics store right here in Hot Springs, where I live as well. I would love for you guys to be over there to follow the journey. The link is at the top of the description. You can right click it, stay on this video, go subscribe, and come right back. Now we move on. At number nine, the Marshall, the single, in Black Ops Cold War. Before you dislike the video, hear me out. The Marshall shotgun pistol was completely busted in Black Ops 3. When it came back in Cold War, it was ridiculous, right? Equally ridiculous. But the craziness with the Cold War version came from the akimbo option. The singular Marshall, on the other hand, it's not very good. If you remember the Marshall 16 from Black Ops 3, the Cold War version was pretty much that, but with all the stats turned way down. The reload animation was long, the ammo capacity was poor, the range was short, the one-shot kill chances seemed completely random. Once you unlock things like incendiary shells and dual wielding, it could break the game. But the initial grind, it was pretty rough. The single-wielded Marshall kind of sucked, but nobody talks about that due to how insane the Akimbo version was. The Nambu in World at War. If you know your COD history, which I know a lot of you do, you know exactly why it's here. I've mentioned it before that most of the pistols in World at War had identical stats, so the one you preferred really just came down to what you thought of the handling. Some people preferred the 1911, some preferred the P38. Nobody, nobody preferred the Nambu. You know why? Because the sights were broken. It was actually misaligned to the right. It made it totally inaccurate if you were actually trying to go for precise shots. So even though the Nambu was statistically on par with the others, I have to call it one of the worst pistols in COD history because it had actual broken iron sights. When it, I mean, the thing isn't even pointing straight. What's the point of using it? At number seven, the machine pistol in Warzone. Now it was introduced in COD World War II. It returned in Vanguard and it's accompanying Warzone update. Now the Vanguard multiplayer version of this is pretty decent. The weapon absolutely sucks though in Warzone and despite a couple patches, it's still not good. The fire rate is high for a machine pistol, yes, but the damage is completely opposite, super low. The recoil is insane, the muzzle flash is obstructive, and there's only 10 rounds in the magazine, so you might want to hit every shot somehow. I've seen some people say the machine pistol is decent in Warzone, and I'm sure we'll have some comments that say it as well once you grind it and get all the high-level attachments, but the journey to get there? It's brutal. There's better simple choices. I mean, it's awful without good attachments, and even with the good ones, I would, I would say it's uh, mid-tier at best. At number six, the FMG-9 single in Modern Warfare 3, similar to the Marshall story in Black Ops Cold War. Now we know the infamous Akimbo weapon uh, was amazing, but if you weren't dual wielding, it was not great. It's remembered by the community with disgust over how game breaking it was when you had two in your hands. The fire rate, it was high. It could kill in a couple shots to the head, but when you're using two of them, the time to kill is one of the fastest in COD history, but when it's one, it's underwhelming. Now, the time to kill is solid. The accuracy, though, it's horrific, and it features a rather wide hip fire spread and some insane recoil. The single FMG9 honestly feels less accurate than the Akimbo version, which, that's saying something. I mean, absolutely nobody ran single FMG9s once they unlocked the Akimbo. Akimbo was infinitely better, and the single version was honestly one of the worst machine pistols in COD history, and there's a lot of good machine pistols in COD history. Cracking into the top five today, the M1911 in COD 4. It's one of the most reoccurring guns in COD history, probably one of the most reoccurring guns on this COD history series, and it's one of the most popular firearms in the real world. Nearly 4.3 million 1911s have been manufactured over the last 111 years, so it's no shocker that it comes up in almost every Call of Duty. However, 
The first modern COD game didn't have the best representation of our reliable friend. It was bouncy, it was hard to shoot consistently, the damage was identical to the other two pistols in the game. The USP-45 and the M9 had identical damage to the 1911, but they had bigger mags, they had less recoil. So there was literally no reason for you to pick this gun up. Some people ran it because of the firing sound or the legacy, but if we're talking raw stats, it was easily the worst pistol in COD 4. At number four, I know there's gonna be a bandwagon for this, I'm ready. The Executioner in Black Ops 2. Yeah, fan club for some reason, but let's get down to business and facts, and the gun was awful. Five round shoddy revolver hybrid, sounds awesome, it was, but the actual performance of the gun was the problem. You had to basically be stuffing the gun in the enemy's mouth in order to get a one-shot kill. And without the speed loader attachment on, the reload animation was slow. The drop-off was punishing. I mean, your pellets completely disappeared after what seemed like 10 feet. Five-round weapon would often get five hit markers. Seriously, without killing anybody, which shouldn't be allowed under 20 feet. Now, I know some people really like the Executioner for the challenge and getting good and the meme factor, but in reality, it was a horrible gun. It's one of the worst pistols in COD history. At number three. The MP443 Grok in Advanced Warfare, the pistol nobody used. Don't lie and say you did because you didn't. It was your standard handgun. Pretty much copy-pasted from COD Ghost. Interestingly enough, it was less functional this time around. Very different gameplay. This thing usually took three to four shots to kill, but actually fired a two-round burst. That burst itself was decently fast, but the burst delay brought the fire rate all the way down to 480 rounds per minute, which is slow. A gun needs three to four shots to kill, but fires in two round bursts with a super long today. Why would you use it in any game, let alone Advanced Warfare? No. I've heard there was eventually a patch for it that made it okay, but I never played on that version of the game, so I don't know. I remember that it sucked. At number two, the Makarov in Black Ops 1. Now, it's a little awkward that there's a really great COD villain named Makarov, but a really terrible gun named Makarov as well, but I digress. Dinky little handgun. Most people forgot about it, aside from the name has a pathetic low 625 RPM fire rate cap, meaning you couldn't shoot it very quickly no matter what you tried to do. Then you had the damage. It could take up to five shots to kill somebody. And on top of that, you had a puny eight round magazine. The odds aren't good. I mean, I guess there was a bonus that it could kill with two headshots at close range, but how often did that happen? Barely ever. Second worst pistol in COD history. But at number one, and there is no argument with this, I don't care what you say, the ASP. The ASP in Black Ops 1. Did you know the ASP stands for a stupid pistol? It does. Look it up. Has to be one of the most awkward and pointless guns I've ever seen in a first-person shooter, and there's no way anybody liked it. Unlocked by default in BO1, and that's a good thing because you had to grind for it, it would have absolutely got zero playtime. Seven-round mag, people, by default. Dealt hardly any damage when you pulled the trigger, could take up to five shots to kill, and the accuracy sucked. You held it with one hand, which looked awkward enough, and then the iron sights were completely unhelpful on top of that. And did I mention... There was not an extended mag attachment for this gun. Why? I don't know. You were forced to use the seven round mag no matter what. It was awful. While some people may hate the Makarov more, I think the ASP was statistically worse and for that it gets the title of the worst COD history pistol ever. I said that wrong. The worst pistol in COD history. There we go. Hope you guys have a great day. Let me know one pistol that was deserving of making this terrible list and make sure you check out Chaos Comics. Help us get to 5,000 subs.